Hello, Brother Anthony. Well, see, it's still peaceful here. You know what this reminds me of? It must have been like this kind of peaceful, and uh, you know, uh, I should tell you this, I was, I, was, I was conceived, born, raised, educated, you know, in the South Bronx of New York City. But you know, back then in August, you know, whenever New York did, I guess they, like you know, when the French came to New York and whenever they came to New York and they beaver hunting, wherever they was do furs, you know, French like the fur kind of thing, and then they handed it over somehow, the Dutch got it, you know, got it, you know, they, they was hanging out there. And then what happened was, you know, the Dutch had this idea, hey, hey, can we buy this island? Manhattan they was talking about, not the Bronx, the Bronx was fun, well, I'm talking about the Bronx right now. But then they said, hey, let's ask these cats here who was hanging out, you know, those, Indi those Indians, you know, the Algonquins or wherever they were, they were Koi, whatever the Indians were, you know, Native American tribes. And they said, hey, we want to buy this stuff. The Indians don't like, but of course they have no concept of what buying means, you know, they said, hey, sure, what, 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 what you going to give us, you know. And then they said, hey, we got some trinkets for you. Trinkets? What's that? Then they pulled out stuff, you know. They said, yeah, how you like this? You know, and they said, hey, that's nice. And what, what, what do you want for this? And they said, well, we'll, we'll give you all of that. You know, we, we want to take all of that for this. And they said, no, nah, sure, go ahead and mm. take it. You know, mm. of course, you know. Then, then, then they came up a little later and said, hey, we got some more trinkets for you. They give you this. <laughs> hey, and then guess what? If you take this trinket and you put it together, see, like, I got this now, and you put it together like that, it becomes another trinket. Now, oh, now, see, now, I, I see you scoffing. I see you laughing. You're going like, oh, oh, oh those are the Indians, blah, 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 blah. But remember, in Africa, they did the same thing. Now, yeah, they came down to what's called the Gold Coast. Well, they call it the Gold Coast because there's gold just lying all over the place. So the cats come and they say, merchants come and they say, hey, we got some, we got some trinkets for you. Look, look, look see how shiny it is. Well, that's not shiny, but, you know, see how it does all that? And then they say, oh, okay, well, what do you want for that? They say, oh, well, what about that stuff right there, that yellow stuff? They say, oh, yeah, sure, we got plenty of those. Yeah, come on, take, take some. So now, those guys take the yellow stuff back up to, you know, where they came from, uh, Northern Hemisphere, Europe, whatever it was. And, you know, they use that stuff to make coins and stuff like that to build an army. Then the army comes and says, hey, you know that stuff you was just giving away for these trinkets? Well, we just want it. We ain't going to give you no trinkets. We just going to take it. They said, well, how can you just take it like that? Because we got this, a gun. <laughs> you got spears, we got guns. You got spears, we got this. You got sticks, we got guns. You know, it's pretty soon. You, see, you, you, know, you know the rest of the history, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking back. Again, I'm back to 16 whatever it was, 1620-something, when that first trinket thing happened. And, you know, people should have saw it coming, but they couldn't see it coming because they had a different mentality. Mm -hmm. But guess what? That mentality has not changed. Because, look, so, now I'm showing sure you this trinket. This is a trinket to me. Now, you might say, well, that's, that looks like something valuable. Well, it is valuable because it's, it's what's called what's it, a one terabyte external drive. I should read it off the thing, but I feel like it. One terabyte. That's like, they tell me it's like a thousand gigabytes. So it's a thousand. They say whatever, somehow megabytes, I don't, they got the, they way up there at the numbers, you know. And so, okay, what can I do with this terabyte thingy? They say, well, you could put a lot of information on it. Information, hey, information is power. I, I like that idea. This makes us equal. They said, well, not exactly, but you know, you're on the way. But here's the trick. I got to tell you this, Brother Billy. Now, see, you, you getting your masters in what they call, what you call in the uh, 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 grade publications. Is that what called grade publications? Grade literature. Grade literature. Okay, mm -hmm. literature. Literature. Mm -hmm. I like that word, literature. <laughs> grade literature, mm -hmm. you know? And, and guess what? On here. I got some great literature. It's my own great literature. Because from my great matter, down my 
gray hairs down the thing, write it on some gray paper, some blue or black or whatever, or type it in the thing, you know? And so, but it's, it's, it's a book. It's a valuable book. Well, I say valuable, it's valuable to me, but also it's called The Essentials A Live Modern Audio Drama. I think that's what I called it. But you know what? I've been writing this book for a long time. This is like 20 years worth of book. And I know it's still good because I was looking over it the other day. And it still holds up. So whatever my grade was doing was is, is great, but it's not published. But see, here's my plot. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm cozying up to you, Brother Billy. <laughs> I like that word, cozy enough. That's what the old word is, cozy enough. I mean, no, I don't mean it. I don't mean it. And like, you know, how it feels. Okay, I like it. What that means is if I make friends with you and your great publications or literature hits, and I can be one of those literature great things that hits, then I'd be like, my book again. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then we're in this historic, you know. Uh, University of Fort Hare is connected to Lovedale College because they used to be one. So I don't know the history. I gotta look at the history of that. But you see, they had a thing called Lovedale Press. Now, if I get your great literature to get published in Lovedale Press, and of course, your great literature thing is my great literature thing, then I can get published in the great literature thing, and then we control it. We don't have to give it to them. Well, you know, you know how this goes. Anyway, this is just a, a, a scenario running around in, in an audio dramatist's mind. Now, I think it's going to work out. I'll see if it does, because we got some time. And since ain't nobody around, hey, we in charge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. This, this is one of those dispatches from the, from, you know, the arts director, Maris. That would be me, T, from the Patterson Statement, trained to bed, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>